Hey, I just got off of a phone conversation with my good friend, Zach, who's a professional bass player in Austin, Texas. He moved from here to Austin some years ago and landed some, some gigs playing with the, the big boys. And it was his suggestion to title the video, the, the title that I have on there, um, which I'm going to explain why he suggested that. But for about 10 years, I devoted, uh, you know, the first five years, a pretty significant portion of my practicing to developing the ability to access every possible tonality within the 12 note chromatic scale. And I've made some videos uh, about this in the past, but I'm going to kind of come at it from a slightly different place today. And I'm going to make more videos about this because it's such a heavy subject to get into and pretty fascinating and potentially helpful for those that are interested in developing themselves in this area of music. And for those that are new here, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, very much appreciate your um, support by doing that. It's free and it's a simple click, so I appreciate it. And also for those that maybe are new around here, I made a video a couple days ago about this, uh, but you know, uh, these are kind of a journal and I wasn't really clear in the last video about this, but you know, they're, they're very relaxed. I want to keep them pretty relaxed. Uh, although I did just put out a video today about playing a 12 bar blues, a jazz blues that was only like three minutes long. So sometimes I'll cut right to the chase of stuff, but I want them to be kind of relaxed and, um, get into some stuff that I wouldn't be able to get to if it was more kind of just quick and to the point. So if that's cool with people. Um, but yeah, these videos, I'm going to, you know, as anybody that is uh, following me here knows that my videos are quite variegated. There's a huge variety of videos, sometimes just talking about music, sometimes playing it, sometimes showing a pedal that I just got or, you know, so it's going to be a wide range. And I think it just kind of keeps it fun and interesting. And uh, yeah, so um, this comes from... Um, I won't get into all the details of studying with Wayne Krantz and everything, because that's um, going to take up even more time. But uh, yeah, so I studied with Wayne for a number of years, and uh, he came out with a book called An Improviser's OS many years ago. And in it, it lays out every possible tonality, everything from the one note scale to the 12 note chromatic scale and everything in between. So I'm not even exactly sure how many, for instance, eight note tonalities there are but maybe there's like 400 or something like that and four or 500 six note tonalities. And so, um, and you know, most of the common scales are seven note scales, like the major scale and its modes and the parent minor scale and its modes, which are also videos I've made. So you can check those out if you want on the channel. More recently I made those. Uh, and then, of course, as we know, the pentatonic scale is a five-note tonality, and the blues scale is a six-note tonality. And um, so most people that play music only play a small portion of what's possible within the 12-note chromatic scale. And plenty of great music has been made with limited knowledge of tonalities. And so these could call, could be called, so, so therefore, I mean, it's not necessary to know all this stuff or to be able to access all this stuff in order to be a, a, a good musician or a great musician. Uh, it's just what's available and what's possible. And if you're interested and you're someone that's curious about this stuff and would like to be able to access all these different tonalities, colors, different ways to talk about it, um, then this is a way to go. And I was, and to some degree still am somebody that's interested in accessing this stuff. Although my practicing has changed quite a bit um, where I don't devote as much time to studying this stuff specifically. Um, it's still, I think, um, it's, it is a way that I still practice, which I'm going to get into. Um, yeah, there's just so many things to say about this. Um, but yeah, so for, for 10 years, I devoted myself to a, a big part of my practicing to this. And, um, I did every possible tonality in the ways I'm going to show you in every position on the guitar and all the keys. I did them all twice. Yeah. So that's why in Wayne's, um, updated version of the book, 
um, version two of the book. Uh, he gave me a credit in this book because, and this is one of the reasons my friend, besides my, my friend just wanting me to have uh, people check out my stuff and he's trying to help me have a, uh, a more popular YouTube channel. Um, besides that, um, I am the only one at least the last time I had a conversation with Wayne Krantz about this, that has gone through every single one and not only one, gone through every one, but every one twice. I mean, he said he, even he didn't do this and he did it for like 17 years. I just did it in a way and he obviously just didn't do it this way, which is fine. Um, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't necessary for him to do this to become great. Um, I just did it in a way that was very systematized. I, I mean, I, I did this with, you could see in the book here, I actually, um, checked off i know coffee stains and the <laughs> in the whole thing it's a mess um you know i checked off every single one as i did them and um yeah so i did it in a very kind of organized way because i wanted to get to every one and then i decided to do it twice and then on the video on on this on the channel here i made a video some years ago a handful of years ago talking about uh, my new journey with 2048 tonalities. And I thought I was going to do it a third time. But once I started to do it, I just kind of lost steam with wanting to do it. And um, uh, so I didn't end up doing it a third time. But um, yeah, so the idea here is that um, you practice this stuff musically. You don't memorize 2048 patterns. And... Um, yeah, you could call these, like I said, you can call them, uh, he, Wayne calls them formulas, by the way, a concoction of functions is how he's using the word formula. You can call them tonalities. You could call them scales. The only problem with using the word scales is um, scales imply that there's an orderly fashion. There's an orderly way, a stepwise way of organizing the stuff. And um, like Wayne, I'm pretty particular with the words I use um, to describe stuff in music. So it's, um, yeah, I think it's useful to, to call them in a way that maybe is going to encourage more creativity. You know, because it's not particularly creative, for instance, to play the C Aeolian scale. You know, to go up and down like that, right? That's not creative. Um, but yeah, so I call them tonalities. I, I prefer that word. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so the idea is to practice these uh, musically. Um, because that's what we want to do with the stuff ultimately is to play music with them. And it's a way of kind of marrying, practicing with making music. And for me, I think that's not all of my practicing, but a good chunk of my practicing I consider that the the bullseye, the center of the bullseye, or the center of the target, um, to to do to do both at the same time. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm just playing unplugged here. I think it's a cool thing to do um, to play an electric guitar unplugged sometimes. Um, but uh, yeah, so the idea is, um, let's see here. Why don't I pick something that maybe people are more familiar with? How about the major scale? And the idea is to do it in four fret zones. And the reason for doing it like this is because a lot of the scales, um, I mean, this is only one reason for doing it like this. A lot of the scales are uh, five notes, uh, uh, excuse me, um, yeah, stretch over the span of five frets. So like, for instance, the A major scale. Of course, you could do this in, you know, in four frets. But the idea with the four fret thing is it'll break any uh, hand memorization as far as, uh, you know, patterns that you've memorized with your hands. And the idea here is to improvise with this stuff. And in order to improvise, you want to get away from patterns because patterns is a form of composition. It's composition applying to play patterns or licks. So this is not about licks and patterns. This is the opposite of using licks and patterns. So it's a different way of approaching things. And it's really about becoming a better improviser. You can use this stuff compositionally, and I have in the past, but it's mostly focused on uh, improvising, being able to spontaneously generate music with whatever tonality in any key, any place on the guitar, any tempo, and be able to generate uh, the goal being great music with it. So, 
Yeah. Um, so how about, uh, I mentioned A, how about the A major scale? And um, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this some more. I mean, this is going to be end, ended up, this is going to end up being many videos. So this is, I'm just getting this whole thing started here with this video. Uh, so I'm going to get into more details about how I practice this stuff now and other ways to practice this stuff. But yeah, how about the A major scale? I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, how about in, a, for, in the key of A? It's kind of weird because if I'm at the eighth fret here and I'm limited to four frets, my lowest note is the C and C isn't in the key of A. And the way you want to access this stuff is either by note name or function. So you have to know in the key of A major that the notes are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, and G sharp, those seven notes. And then you also want to know that the major scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So for instance, a, uh, a six note tonality of that, one variation of that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, so no 5. So that would be one of the six note tonalities that's in the book. Um, so yeah, so this is a weird place to play on the guitar in the key of A. And you turn on the metronome. And um, for me, I improvise uh, harmonically and melodically. I mix it up because that's uh, what I do in my normal playing. Uh, but you could just practice it just melodically and then another time just practice it harmonically. But all the functions are available. Uh, all those pitches are available in this. Um, I mean, you can access the A major scale here. Uh, I just don't know any pattern for uh, the major scale here in A. So I have to rely on my knowledge of uh, functions or note names. I actually just use functions, which I'm going to get into in another video. But um, So I'm just going to access the stuff... Um, with that knowledge, three, four. Yeah, so that was um, an eight bar phrase. That's another video to get into phrasing. Um, so it wasn't just random. Uh, my phrasing was organized there. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's the thing about this practicing. It's like the notes and the position and the key and all this kind of stuff is just a kind of a platform to work on your musicianship. So that's why turning on the metronome is important because then you're working on your time and then you can work on your phrasing, your ability to play melody, harmony, rhythms, um, articulation, groove. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so it's a really cool way of, of practicing. Yeah. Um, you're, you're working on musicianship stuff while getting more control of tonalities. And so I'm a big proponent of, of this way of practicing. And um, it's hard. I mean, if you've never done this before, it can be really challenging um, to be able to do what I just did there. And um, so what I would do, I mean, um, I'll, I'll end the video with this. Um, what I would do now is I would practice the, the if I were to practice the major scale, I would do it in four frets like this, going all the way up, doing all four fret zones. And what I do, uh, this isn't what Wayne does, he told me, um, is say I started in the key of A right here. Then, and I move up to the next, and I improvise there for a little while. Then I would go to here, and then I would do the key of A flat. And then when I go to here, G, F sharp, F, E, so on and so forth. So as my hand goes up, the keys are going down. Um, just to keep it interesting, because, um, yeah, I, I I start feeling comfortable with the tonality too, too quickly. <laughs> uh, so I need to change it up. And that's important that you don't start getting comfortable with stuff, because one of the things that's important about this is the searching. You're searching. You're getting better at searching for stuff and finding stuff. Yeah, so I'll leave the video there. Um, because if I don't end it in a conscious way, then this is going to go on for a long time because this is a huge subject. 
But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, so uh, please feel free to do that.